Hello everyone and welcome to today's live Zoo to You. My name is Katie. I'm an educator here at the Stone Zoo and today I am so excited to be joined by a very special guest. This is Mari who is our commissary technician here at Stone Zoo. I think commissary technician is a wonderful title but I prefer to call Mari our zoo chef. So today we are going to be exploring our zoo kitchen here at Stone Zoo to learn all about the food that we feed our animals and all of the amazing and nutritious diets that, Dar that Mari prepares daily for the animals. If you do have any questions during our video, please feel free to ask them in the comment section. So Mari, would you be able to give us a little bit of a tour around your kitchen here at the zoo? I definitely can. <laughs> So we can start with this fridge right here. So in this fridge, we normally keep all of the diets that are prepared and for the animals that are around this area. So that the people don't have to walk that much. These are some of the diets that I'll be delivering later on. And these are the carnivore diets that are going along with it. <laughs> Next is my favorite freezer. <laughs> So this is where we keep all the frozen goodies. So we have fish like herring and capelin. We have little fuzzies, rabbits, super size. We have lusticles that we make for the animals when it's extremely hot. Um, so yeah, we have like rolling sand. We keep the meat in the middle. And we have more meat on the bottom. Then we have like blueberries and chickpeas and then gels that the hornbills get, which I cook myself. <laughs> I think a lot of people wonder what we feed carnivores at the zoo with the assumption that we have to go out and catch mice or we get live mice delivered. So I think people, I'm hoping that folks watching at home would be interested to see that all of our diets yes. for our carnivores come to us already frozen and then they are thawed out to room temperature. So we do not feed any live animals at the zoo. Yeah, we like to do it this way to prevent diseases from like any live animals that may be out there. Um, not to say they do catch their own, but we don't give them live animals. Um, in this fridge we keep our greens. So this is almost a week's worth, so kale is the biggest hit. And then we have romaine. We have escrow in the other fridge and collards as well. So how many times a week do we get produce deliveries here at the zoo? I try to do once a week, but if I can't get everything in that one visit, then I'll do twice a week. Um, and here we have some zucchini, sweet potatoes, those are very popular. Apples, the escrow, bananas, I see some like asparagus that. in there too. Yeah, we're trying that. So Ooh. Too, so some of the animals did like it some and not so much. But <laughs> just I like people. The, yeah, the majority did. I like it. <laughs> this is where we have some of the grains for some of the other animals, like the macaws. They love the little sunflowers and stuff. And this is where I prep the diets. <laughs> So since we're over at Mari's diet prep area, we're going to show all of you a different diet that Mari has made. So this is for some of our animals at the zoo. It does look very different depending on which form it's in. So Mari yes. just blended it up fresh, but we want to show it to everyone watching so you can see what it looks like blended. And before it goes through the blender to see if we have any guesses what diet this has been, uh, I'm sorry, what animal this diet has been prepared for. So Mari, can you tell us a little bit about what's in this diet? Yeah, so we have some grapes, some apples, and some bananas, and we measure according to the number of animals that we have and how much, you know, calories they can get and things like that. Um, so this is the before, and this is the after. And this is just one part of the second diet, so this will go to the keeper area and they will mix it with biscuits and water and juice and vitamins and it'll become like a big slush almost and then they'll put it like in little cups and the bass will swing and eat right from the cups. Excellent. So if you, if you 
guessed it. This was for our batch. So I wish everyone had smell-o-vision right now because it smells like a really good fruit smoothie. It's torturous in the yeah, summer because you want to have it for yourself. It's nice and cold. It smells really good. So this is a bat smoothie. So lots of fresh fruits all blended up and then um, the zookeepers will add in some pelletized food some apple juice and that is for our colony of Seba's short-tailed leaf-nosed bats. Very cute. Very cute. I do love bats myself. I so do. now that we've seen, I guess, a frugivore diet, can yeah. we maybe see a carnivore diet and we'll see if we have any guesses of who yes. likes to eat this tasty snack. I guess for me, not so tasty, but the fruit <laughs> looks a little bit better. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get our next diet. So again, if you have any guesses as you are looking at this diet and the ingredients in it of who it might be fed to, you are welcome to type them into the comment section. And if you're watching this even after this video has been posted live, we're going to take a minute before we talk about who this diet has been made for. So see if you can guess who this might be for. All right, Mari, what do we have in this delicious dish? We have some ground meat, some herring, and some caplin. It's under the meat, but it's there. Oh, that little tiny fish right there. So herring and capelin. Capelin are smaller than the herring? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tremendously. So this so is a good amount of food. Yeah, this so is, that's a capelin. That's a capelin? Mm -hmm. So this is for a pretty energetic animal at the zoo. We also can tell that this is for a carnivore. There are no fruits or veggies in here. So as you're watching, see if you can maybe think of who might be very energetic, needing a lot of food, especially now that she is a very busy mom of three. So if you're watching and guessed that this was a diet for our North American river otters, you were right. So this is Duncan, our female North American river otters diet. She gave birth to kits in February. So she is very busy. She's out on exhibit with those babies now, running around, swimming around all day. So she has lots of food in here to keep yeah. her energy up. Oh, I think she's so excited now that she's out there swimming. Oh, yeah. I think she's so she on these nice warm days. I know. I know. She's, she loves the water. She <laughs> loves it. So, Mari, I'm wondering, do you have a favorite diet to prepare at the zoo? I do. I like to prepare the carnivore diet. It's the best. Um, but I also like the gibbon. They do take a little longer than the rest of them. That's only because the mom is such a fast eater that we cut it small so that the other ones, her children, can have time to eat as well. Um, but they are, you know, very energetic. They bounce all over the place. So I guess we have to cut it small and give them something to forage for. <laughs> exactly. And so as we're talking a little bit about like accommodations for certain animals, can you talk about how you might prepare a diet differently for a, a picky eater at the zoo or maybe an animal that doesn't like a certain food? Yes, so we have two examples that I can think of right off the top of our head. Um, the male iguana, for some reason, does not like romaine lettuce. So I chop all the greens and mix it like a salad so that he cannot pick it out and he eats it that way. Um, and then we have the female Kawadi honey. She did not like the kibble at first at all. I think she's doing a little better now. So we grind up the kibble and then add meat to it and make a meatball out of it. And I can show you. So this is what it looks like in powder form. I grind it right in that blender. So that's just like a, a dry kibble, so, like people might feed their cats or dogs? Yeah, oh. the dogs, yeah. So it'll be these little kibbles right here. And then you just grind them. And then this is actually the meatball that I've already mixed <laughs> together. <laughs> and then she'll eat it that way. So is that something you just find out through like trial and error and testing it out to figure out what they like? Yeah, so the keepers are really good at um, noticing when an animal's not eating something and they, 90% of the time, will come up with the solution, but if it doesn't work, we work like as a team to figure out a way to get the animal to eat it. Very cool. So like, we used to have the spider monkey. She was very picky also, so we would cook a lot of her vegetables mm -hmm. 
and she would eat them. Sometimes she wouldn't want to eat one day, she wouldn't want the sweet potatoes, but she would want it the next day. So okay. it's a team effort. Yeah. And just like with humans, like sometimes a certain food tastes better cooked or uncooked. So animals yeah. definitely have their individual food preferences too, which I think is so fascinating. It's a really cool, you know, challenge to have to overcome at the zoo. Yeah, that's why I always tell the keepers, like, I have the easy job because I'm dealing with sweet potatoes <laughs> and grapes. They're not going to fight back. But <laughs> you guys have the animals that they will let you know if they don't want to do something. Exactly. But, yeah, I love it. <laughs> and what is your, I think that not a lot of people know about other jobs at the zoo. Usually when you think of a zoo, you think of zookeepers. And I think that your job is so interesting. So what is your all-time, like, favorite part of your job? The animals. So, honestly, I didn't know that this job existed either. Like, it never crossed my mind. I happened to fall upon it and got it, thank God. But... I just like it because I come here in the morning and I go to get my containers, but I make sure that I go around the whole zoo and say good morning to every animal that I can see. Um, and I like to think that most of them are returning it. <laughs> but it's just like a happy place to be. Like, I come in, I prep the diets. I don't always follow the same order because it prevents boredom. Because, you know, doing the same thing every day, you can get used to it. But... I just do a different page every day. So I might start with the primate page today. I might start with the sloth page tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I just, I love it. I think a lot of us are here for the animals. Yeah. Absolutely. So I think that's like the number one. Um, and yeah, I've definitely upped my knife skills working. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I would say that was my favorite part. Can you prep dinner at home really fast? I can if my two-year-old stops asking me to come play with him. <laughs> okay, my last question. With picky eaters, has your knowledge of how to get picky eaters here at the zoo to eat a well-balanced meal, has that helped you out with having a two-year-old? No. Because <laughs> <laughs> he always figures it out. Uh, like, he, it took me a year to get him to eat mashed potatoes. Like, who doesn't like mashed potatoes? Um... And, like, sometimes he'll eat eggs. The next day he won't eat eggs. And, like... Just like the animals here. Yeah. He yeah. won't eat meat at home. But you, I got him, like, a Brazilian beef patty. And he ate it perfectly fine. So, I don't know. I guess he likes beef patties. But, yeah. Yeah. So, they don't work that well at home. Uh, but, thank God. It, it works, works here. It works here. <laughs> which is, I guess, important. <laughs> all right. Well, we are just about all out of time. So, we want to thank you all so much for joining us today for our kitchen tour with Mari, our commissary technician. Make sure to stop by the zoo and see all of our amazing animals here in person. Thanks for watching. Thank you.